Good morning. I'm really happy to participate in such an interesting session. Um, mesothelioma is a very heterogeneous uh, disease from the point of view of its morphology. Also, it's not so frequent. Uh, hence, uh, our knowledge um, of it is not so big, uh, unlike the other pathologies. Um, let's uh, switch to the essence of the issue. I'd like to start with classification. The modern WHO um, classification is as follows. Mesoteliomas are subdivided into malignant and conditionally benign because there's a code dash one. It means there may be local aggressive. It may be locally aggressive and it has low potential of metastasis. However, it may cause local destruction. It's a papillary mesothelioma and it's more frequent in abdomen than in pleura. It's usually a neoplasm two centimeters in size. Uh, several, they are multiple, hence we should think um, whether it's um, uh, really a benign, uh, highly differentiated uh, neoplasm. As for the malignant m m mesothelioma, it's subdivided into two uh, types, uh, diffused and uh, uh, focused or localized. It has um, uh, different uh, uh, clinical and uh, uh, different uh, location within the serous um, uh, cover and uh, histology. It may be, uh, uh, both of them may be um, um, epitheloid, biphase, or thracomatoid. They can't be told one from the other. So um, uh, the pathologist on the basis of a biopsy without the clinical data cannot tell which is which uh, for sure. Hence, the teamwork is very important. Um, one should mention the etiology of this um, disease. Uh, when you hear mesothelioma, uh, you remember that that it's associated with asbestos and with asbestosis. Uh, it's a factor of um, environment uh, that uh, develops the disease, but um, there are certain differences um, uh, between abestos uh, associated um, mesotelomas regarding the sex, age, and uh, specialization. So most of them is um, 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 plural cavity mesotelioma in men, elder men. Uh, that's most frequent because um, the latent period um, after the um, exposition until the development uh, of um, um, a malignant tumor is no less than 15 years, but on average it's from 30 to 40 years, 3040. Hence comes the question, what's the uh, development of non-asbestos caused mesoteliomas? That's uh, the one in women, in um, abdomen uh, cavity, or in other um, uh, uh, cavities, uh, like um, in um, uh, pericardium. And uh, what are the uh, main uh, reasons? Um, well, besides asbestos, we have other mineral uh, fibers. Um, also in darters, um, may cause mesoteliomas. Uh, that is proved by epidemiology research and um, animal tests. Uh, usually it's uh, related to a certain region. And most of those fibers have physical parameters similar to those of um, asbestos and the types of uh, crystals uh, or similar crystals uh, that uh, cause um, asbestos uh, mesothelioma. These are uh, fibers with bioperistence that cause uh, local inflammation or may directly damage the DNA and hence uh, they start the cancerogenesis process. It's irradiation, of course, and uh, um, that's uh, uh, childhood uh, neoplasms, uh, lymphomas, embryonal um, tumors like uh, Williams uh, tumor and kidneys in children. And um, after a long period, uh, this may cause the mesothelioma development. Uh, um, Eight-year-old girl was irradiated whole body, and the papillary cancer of a thyroid uh, was developed plus the abdomen mesothelioma. So this mechanism of development is proved, it's logical, and it's known that if the uh, serous cover is within um, the um, um, irradiation zone, then there's direct impact. Also, 
also ionizing radiation if that is part of the uh, profession. Um, as for the chronic inflammation as such, uh, there are certain cases that prove uh, that um, mesothelioma of pleura or abdomen uh, may be uh, in the background of a pleural disease of a TB, chronic MPML, and uh, chronic peritonitis. But as of today, uh, the mm, mechanism is not quite clear, it's not obvious, uh, and it's difficult to trace uh, the presence or absence of exposition to different mineral fibers. Um, um, they also talk about the viral etiology of um, mesothelioma. They uh, call um, the macaca rhesus um, a virus, M14. Uh, it was obtained, uh, used to get the anti-polio vaccine, so many thousands of people were, in theory, infected. As of today, um, um, it is only proved on animals. Epidemiology researchers didn't prove that yet. Uh, there's also the papadine associated uh, tumors. I'd like to um, explain that in more detail. Uh, that's the surface molecular mechanism that causes um, the neoplasms. Uh, PEP1 is a BRCA associated protein. It's one of the um, uh, uh, proteins that does the BRC function. That's, first of all, the DNA reparation, uh, repairing. Also, it has the function of uh, regulating of um, chromatin modification and regulation of um, a certain number of genes expression. So it works uh, as a transcription factor. It uh, may cause uh, higher or lower activity of a number of genes. Uh, hence, uh, it uh, works uh, like proto or anti-oncogene. And uh, if this uh, a proton is lost or its function is uh, lost, uh, there's a um, um, connection between the melanoma uh, development and uh, PEP1 inactivation. Also, some neoplasms on skin are caused by that. Um, with um, a germinative uh, mutation or besides the uh, skin and uh, mesothelioma, other malignancies may develop, uh, uh, like uh, cholangiocarcinoma. Uh, so it's the key protein that may be uh, involved in mesothelioma uh, pathogenesis. Uh, the present-day data says that um, the frequency of such uh, mutations and uh, inherited uh, syndromes with a mesothelioma uh, development with no asbestos um, exposition, according to the literature sources, it's um, less than 1%. Uh, so this mechanism does work. Uh, but from the point of view of inheritance, uh, the frequency isn't high. But somatic mutation of this uh, gene uh, sporadically may cause mesothelioma. A bit later, I'll explain that. Well, disregarding the fact that we have a bigger list of uh, probable uh, reasons of uh, mesothelioma uh, development, the leader is asbestos and exposition to mineral fibers. The second frequent uh, reason is spontaneous or idiopathic mesothelioma when we are not sure about uh, the trigger. We know uh, the molecular profile of this uh, disease uh, and uh, form uh, mesothelioma. Uh, it's uh, typical uh, that uh, a lot of chromosomes um, are disrupted um, and uh, quite big uh, pieces or uh, leverages of chromosomes are uh, destroyed. Uh, much more seldom there are more copies of these um, sites um, and research proves that asbestos associated mesothelioma has the genome uh, disruption uh, different from mesotheliomas uh, caused by other reasons. However, irrelevant of the trigger, quite frequently uh, mesotheliomas um, have a loss of function of neurofibramine. NF2 uh, protein is one of uh, the uh, regulators of the function of cytoskeleton of the cell, and the uh, loss causes inactivation of uh, the so-called uh, um, canon or uh, deep um, um, 
but it, uh, this causes proliferation, survival of a uh, tumor uh, cells and makes them invasive. Uh, it determines their malignant uh, type. Uh, quite frequently, mesotheliomas have deletion of the short uh, shoulder of the ninth chromosome. Uh, with the so-called sickle independent uh, regulators of the cell types, so that CDK2A and, uh, and 2B, that encode uh, the uh, protein uh, B16 and P15, uh, they regulate uh, the cells into the synthetic uh, phase and later prepare them for mitosis. Um, besides, on this uh, site of uh, chromosomes, uh, there's the gene CDKN2A of uh, the uh, P14 protein. When its functions are lost, it destabilizes P51 protein, which is well known, and we know it's um, um, oncology functions. So in mesothelioma, so we see the functional loss of P53 at absence of mutation in the gene of this protein. And again, the cells get the property of uncontrolled multiplication. PEP1, less than a percent, is a germinative losses of the protein function due to different restructuring of this gene, and part of the chromosome coding, it is lost. Uh, besides, there are spot mutations and deletions. Um, and um, up to 60% of uh, somatic uh, mutations in mesotheliomas are present uh, with different uh, just uh, types, uh, quite or more frequently with epithelioid. And at present, we have data that if there's a, a BAP1 gene mutation, uh, that's the factor of a better prognosis. Um, though these um, uh, researchers are doubtful, perhaps they were simply more attentive to such uh, patients. Um, uh, one should uh, test uh, this uh, protein to accumulate more data and to analyze uh, uh, the connection with uh, the prognosis. Um, uh, besides, there may be a loss of LTS1 or 2 uh, protein that also give, uh, uh, inactivates uh, GIP uh, protein and activizes uh, proliferation and progression. Now, regarding the morphology, one may speak about it for a very long period of time. I was a bit uh, scared to get too deep into morphology. I want everything to be interesting and clear. We know that there are three types, epithelioid and mesothelioma, consists of uh, big epithelioid cells that do remind uh, the epithelial uh, cells. Uh, hence, Uh, this uh, uh, differentiation, uh, well, it's carcinoma. If we talk about pleura, it's first of all the lung cancer. If there's no info telling that it's a, a disseminating uh, uh, process in the patient, these may be the metastasis of other carcinomas, um, uh, then it's a, a bigger choice. Um, the problem of diagnosis is not quite here because unlike um, many carcinomas, mesothelioma has a very monotonous uh, cell uh, content with no polymorphism or variety. It has a, a usually a low methatic um, activity. If we have conditions of diff diagnosis with carcinomas, makes you think that it is mesothelioma, and you have to uh, look for other methods to resolve the issue. The other uh, diagnostic problem is pleuritis uh, and differentiation of mesothelioma with uh, pleuritis, especially with if the biopsate is small, it's quite difficult uh, uh, since the react a process may be polymorphic or atypical, or they may have a proliferative activity, which is reactive. Uh, hence, uh, there's a number of uh, tricks that may be used by the uh, morphologist or pathologist, uh, a morphological one, because in this diagnostic um, uh, a row, a lot is of work is required and a good teamwork between um, radiotherapists, clinicists, and uh, others. Others. Uh, if uh, uh, the patient has bullous uh, lung disease and, and uh, relapsing neurothorax um, with a small reactive pleuritis, and these situations keep repeating, hence uh, we may uh, look for 
the signs that will enable us to differ the malignant and benign process, not so cytological but architecturally, because certain layers are typical. If these are repeating episodes, then there's irritation of the mesothelial mesothelial layer, there's hyperplasia, there's exudation that contains a certain number of protein. Uh, this uh, protein stays on the surface of pleura. Uh, later, it's uh, covered with uh, mesothelium, and we can see such layer uh, structures uh, with fibrosis and mesothelial elements uh, that uh, may have a uh, solid tubular pleurosis and other structures. And uh, if there's uh, inflammative infiltrate, uh, and this may help um, uh, to uh, make the diagnosis. Um, the absolute sign of mesothelium is the presence of invasive growth in subpleural uh, fat. If we talk about Pleurum. If the elements uh, are mesothelial ones, uh, even if the gistology looks benign, but they penetrate the fat um, uh, tissue, then it's likely to be a malignant process. And if it's a relatively young uh, patient, um, it's um, uh, better to test um, uh, the patient for BEP1. As for the sarcomatoid mesothelioma, it's um, much more rare case than epithelioid um, mesothelioma. Epithelioid is the most frequent morphology option. So um, here we have um, another number of diagnostic problems. First of all, we should differentiate it from a mesenchymal. Um, uh, tumors. If we talk about pleura, it's rather easy. Uh, the most frequent mesenchymal uh, uh, tumor of pleura is a um, uh, um, different one, and it's easy to tell uh, using immunogistic chemistry. But if we have a metastatic patient with big neoplasms and we don't know where the focus is, uh, then differential diagnosis with a big number of sarcomas is more difficult. Same about the abdomen cavity. In abdomen cavity, there are many options of mesenchymal tumors, and uh, 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 cooperation is uh, necessary between uh, the radiotherapist, uh, clinicist, and uh, um, morphologist. Uh, reactive processes may be simulated, um, and they may be suspicious from the point of view of some comatoid mesothelioma, because it's a much more difficult diagnosis uh, uh, due to the fact that reactive stromal modifications may be comparable to the small cell sarcomatoids and uh, desmoplastic mesotheliomas uh, that have uh, a lot of this uh, fibrous um, intercellular tissue. Uh, so to suspect this uh, diagnosis, and to uh, uh, do certain activities for diagnosis, one need, uh, needs clinical information. As for the biphase mesothelioma, it's uh, the essence of many pathologies. Uh, which are a kind of a continuum. If we take the malignant mesothelioma, on one side of the spectrum, there's epithelioid one. On the other side, there's the desmoplastic rhodocomatoid mesothelioma. And between them, there's quite a long way. A biphase mesothelioma is the uh, combination of both components um, and their morphology and level of expression may be very different. Um, uh, we have the right to uh, set this diagnosis if one of the components makes more than 10 percent. Um, assessing the share of components at a biopsy is not very always possible. So it's a legitimate uh, diagnosis uh, uh, regarding the resection material. Well. But, um, however, you see from 10 to 90, it's quite a long way that a tumor may make, uh, and um, its morphology may be very diverse. Now, regarding the additional methods of um, research, immunogist chemistry helps us a lot in most of uh, cases, at, if at the stage of morphology analysis and analysis of all the available clinical information, we've suspected mesothelioma. Take a look at the first part of the table. That's mesothelial marker. So the present-day approach is as follows. It was uh, developed mainly for epithelioid mesotheliomas. So to make sure about the diagnosis, we should have two positive uh, mesothelial markers and two negative epithelial markers. Uh, since uh, there's no 
golden marker, uh, that single golden marker that could tell us what is it. Uh, so we uh, needed to use uh, the uh, combination of markers when uh, making a diagnosis. Uh, to summarize, uh, mesothelioma is a, a multifaceted pyramid uh, that requires differential diagnosis uh, regarding both the reactive non-tumor processes and different epithelial um, uh, tumors. And in a number of cases, there are sarcomas, which are also very diverse. And uh, hence, the morphologist uh, is uh, in the uh, surrounded by the huge uh, uh, different diagnoses. Uh, we are limited regarding the specificity of uh, uh, markers. Uh, we can't do well without the assistance of clinicist and uh, radiologist. So um, teamwork, effective teamwork is necessary for good results uh, in um, making uh, diagnosis of uh, patients with such uh, difficult neoplasms.